be as um, common to um, to most people as it could be. Um, and so I'm going to start by going through. Basically, I have two two uh, decks that I'm going to go through. Um, and the first one is so going before to you get started. Let me just say um, welcome everybody. This is the bi-weekly meeting of the UMBC uh, Cyber Defense Lab. And today it's our honor to have a guest speaker, Dr. Ted Selker, who's gonna be speaking about um, uh, voting technology with an emphasis on uh, usability and security. Um, and with your permission, we will record this uh, talk and post it on our website. Sure, uh, happy, happy to do that. Um... And what I want to know is, let's see, how do I, I want to make sure that I am uh, sharing the right screen. Um, and what I'm going to share, I guess, is the screen that, okay. Um, okay, I'm going to, this screen, and let's just make sure this works out the way we want it to, which is that, when I, I should see, okay, the question I have is there. Do you see a full screen of the, of the, of the, um, of a man with uh, looking at a, at a, at a, at a card? Yeah. yeah. All right. So this, yeah. So, um, you know, it's, it's good to meet you guys from, uh, uh, the, the students of, uh, University of Baltimore and other colleagues. Um, I want to say that um, I have known and enjoyed talking with um, Alan Sherman uh, and uh, for for many years about these topics. Uh, the first time that we talked about voting technology, I had built a uh, voting uh, simulator for us to test out verification, um, uh, paper verification, and he. Uh, ran an experiment uh, actually at University of Maryland, Baltimore, using our equipment. So I was very excited to have uh, another another laboratory when I was at MIT using it. And so that was the beginning of that that collaboration. That was many many years ago. Um, today, uh, Alan and I uh, and some others um, talk about um, various aspects of usable security uh, and including for voting. Um, so I'm going to start by saying I spent I started the Caltech MIT voting technology project with a few other people right after um, uh, a big problem occurred in in uh, Florida uh, that caused people to question the um, election um, in 2000 and um, I was asked by my then boss Nicholas Negroponte um, what 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 do we have to think about with voting? And I said, well, um, you know, whenever you do something that's really complicated, you have more problems. And when you do something that's um, you don't do very often, you have more problems. And when it's something you're not very familiar with, you have more problems. So these these issues they're they're very they're 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 cognitive they're they're actually usability issues um, make it so that People make lots of mistakes when using a brand new voting system. Um, and you'll see that the errors in um, correctly filling out ballots go down exponentially the second and third time that people in, a, of, uh, in any voting um, jurisdiction using a specific system um, uh, use it. On the other hand, uh, people have um, ways of ameliorating that. So we have to think about what is it about people that makes it difficult to do things that are complicated, like, like fill out a really complicated uh, security password. Even you know it's, it's stressful, um, you know. Uh, and so we have issues of our emotional uh, position. Do we believe we're going to be able to succeed doing it? Can you hear me? Okay. I'm sorry. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. yeah. We can hear you. All right. Okay. Um, we have um, our limitations, perceptual and motor uh, limitations. Can we can we hold a pen? Uh, so there's been you know lots of lots of uh, 
problems. I uh, have even seen where um, because people thought that uh, this old, uh, pe people had trouble with the touch screen back in the day, uh, they would give them a sharp pencil to poke at the voting machine. And I remember watching an old man trying to poke at a voting machine over and over again and finally getting a selection. Well, when you poke at a touchscreen with a sharp object, you're probably destroying it, one thing. But in fact, it doesn't work. It's designed to have a finger poke at it. And so uh, the administration of even as simple a thing as a touch uh, screen can be screwed up by bad procedure. Um, feedback is, is, of course, critical for us to recognize that we're being, that we're being successful, just as in a moment ago, I made sure that you could hear me. I was worried that, you know, I don't want to be speaking into the, the wind. And we have to be able to consider, review, and change things in order to know we did it well, because people are terrible at doing anything very well. And there's, um, I'm going to move my, the picture. If you, I have the picture of you guys over there. Um, and, and so we have to, we have to uh, check even on ourselves. Just to give you an example of that, um, there's a friend of mine uh, who started the field of cognitive science named Don Norman, a uh, very, very, very exciting guy. And he um, told me after, after uh, filling out a paper ballot with his wife in a hotel room, uh, he said, we both wrote down a sample ballot. That's a list of all the people we're gonna vote for. And then we transferred it by ourselves to our ballot. And then we checked each other's ballot. And guess what? Out of 27 races, that's things you can make a selection for, we both found one mistake in the other person's ballot. So this, this business of people doing things very carefully is just not very good. And we have to design the processes so that they do. Here we have a very famous picture of somebody looking at, at, a, at a hole in a punch card and trying to decide if that punch hole has if the if the little chunk called Chad has fallen out or not, um, so that was a uh, why that was a big deal in in uh, the 2000 election was that um, the big deals the tens of thousands of lost votes um, due to uh, um, various things that were not litigatable um, were were um, we couldn't do anything about. It. But we did have these chads for 509 uh, ballots. There were these chads that were being that were being um, they were being disputed, and that was really actually could have been enough to to change the entire course of history by by having um, Gore as our president instead of Bush. Um, so so that's another thing is that one of the things that we like about uh, about uh, systems that we build today is that we can verify them. So what's nice about this card is it's something physical. So the fact that you know um, many many more time people voted for for um, uh, Buchanan in Volusia County, I mean in in, um, in Palm Beach County than other places had to do with this this you can just barely see it this this what was so called butterfly ballot. And I'm just going to read for you. We have uh, George W. Bush up here. We have Al Gore down here, and we have Pat Buchanan over here. And somehow, what happened is that <clears throat> people uh, voted for um, uh, more than one uh, 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 president in validating their vote because you can't vote for more than one president. And it had to do with the layout of this ballot. So uh, making things that are uh, easy uh, um, uh, to to use is not as simple as it might seem. Now, in in that in that election, yes, yes, uh, and uh, no, sorry to interrupt. There, there was a, I was just checking, but the, the new slide is fine. The previous slide was very hard to see, at least on this end. Um, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, sorry. Yeah, there was a um, that 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 uh, ballot design, the butterfly ballot from Palm Beach County, um, where it has side by side things, uh, and people made mistakes by by voting over here when they meant to vote over here um, is, is very famous. But that, that accounted for 17,000 uh, uh, 17, votes uh, as opposed to the Chad, which was 509. So the problem is there was no way to tell when you take a look at something, you would take an, like an artifact after the fact, 
one of the reasons people have been so focused on paper trails and other kinds of verification, I, I've been a big proponent of audio verification. We can talk about that at some point, maybe. But is that if you have a separate record of what the person's intent was, then you can have some some notion of, of some way of, of, of solving that problem. So back when we started doing this, we found out that registration was actually the biggest place that votes were lost. A very funny thing to learn that, you know, it has nothing to do with the ballot box. It has to do with people not being able to register. So <clears throat> we, we worked very hard with the help of America Vote Act to make it so that it was very easy to register to vote. Now people are trying to unravel that um, in, in America. In fact, um, in various ways, uh, voting is always a bit of a, um, a bit of a, of a, of a, of a hand to hand combat. Just to give you an example, um, last week in Texas, there was a, a situation where they, um, for the first time required that mail in ballots, uh, that you send in, uh, would have your social security number or your driver's license number on it. And, um, whereas normally with mail in ballots, uh, maybe, you know, some small portion, some fraction of a percent are rejected. They rejected 30% of the ballots. Okay. So this is a big damn deal, right? When we start making procedures that let people reject 30% of the ballots, um, we, we've got a problem. So what we are always trying to, and the, the thing at the same day registration, um, uh, motor voter registration in this country means that when you, when you um, uh, get, get a, get a, get a driver's license, they, 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 you know, attempt to give you registration for voting. Um, and then confusing ballots, we think that one to 2 million people lost their votes um, in that first election. Uh, polling place operations, uh, I've seen polling places where uh, there's one, one narrow door to get through and uh, there's four, four polling places inside and, and everyone's waiting for 40 minutes to go up these stairs when around the back of the building, there's, there's actually a, the accessible entrance. Anyway, there's lots of things that go wrong in polling places that are just because uh, people um, are stressed, actually. Um, so is there rampant coercion in absentee ballots? Absentee ballots are the, are the bane of our existence, except that they are necessary right now for a lot, certainly with, with COVID, in that um, they, they take away the private uh, ballot quite easily. Um, my neighbor had his wife uh, with Alzheimer's and decided to vote for her. Um, uh, I've talked to people who have voted for their, their uh, college uh, son or daughter. Um, they, they um, you know, they, uh, people can hold a gun to your head while you fill out your ballot. So once you're in, not in a polling place, the, the bets are off about, about it being a private ballot. The convenience of absentee ballots, oh my gosh, it's fantastic. Um, and does it get more people out to vote? Uh, that, that actually, I'm not sure of the documentation of that, but, um, we don't have good data about, about, uh, the coercion with absentee ballots. We do know from a, a paper by, um, Charles Stewart that, um, it is, um, you know, multiple times, um, the, the, the coercion of, of, um, of, of in-person voting. So. I don't like going to a polling place. You don't. It's it's stressful. You know, there's these problems, but it's got the advantage of being uh, more easily a, a private vote. Um, and then you know, there's always talk of you know somebody finding a ballot box floating in the bay. Or uh, I was actually at a voting place where at three in the morning we found a ballot box behind a door in the outskirts of L.A. that had to be flown in by helicopter to be counted. Do we are we pretty sure that that ballot box hadn't been tampered with since the end of the election and since nobody was guarding it? Well, we hope not. So there, there have been, you know, in, in, in India, people will at gunpoint take whole voting machines and, and, and wander off with them. Uh, so that's that's not good. So um, I kind of already started with this idea of making it into a ritual. 
uh, is is the way to get better at things. Um, and I have on the on the right hand top uh, side um, Thomas Edison's first electronic voting machine patent. So this this is a funny funny one because this was made for Congress. Of course, in Congress in this country, people would like to um, know how other people voted, and so this was going to give a private uh, a private uh, um, vote to people in Congress. Not not probably. The best, the best uh, idea um, for for them, but um, we've continued to flirt with uh, using uh, various kinds of uh, technologies uh, forever with with um, with voting, um, and then then you start looking at these other parts of the process. And um, <clears throat> in Boston, it is illegal to canvas. That is to uh, present. Um, voting, you know, up uh, positions within 100 feet of the um, of the of the polling place. Well, this 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 uh, this uh, SUV has lots of donuts and coffee in the back of it, and it is uh, paid for by the mayor. Um, and here's the opening to the polling place, and here's all these people canvassing right there at the entrance. And what I like to say is, these guys were depriving. The people inside that were selling uh, selling cookies and donuts uh, to to voters, these these children, from their from their livelihood, from making the money to they were going to uh, get to buy uh, new pencils or whatever for their classroom. Uh, so this is completely illegal. And when I confronted a policeman after being very 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 frustrated because a poll watcher is not supposed to confront anybody, um, I actually uh, almost got arrested for for uh, making a point of of that problem. Um, the the uh, oversight of a process is critical. Uh, so, right here you see these are fax machines, okay? And this is right after the Katrina um, disaster in in New Orleans. Uh, you guys might be you know not as aware of it, but there was this uh, huge flood that basically made uh, most people have to leave New Orleans, and so most so hundreds of thousands of people voted from Houston, and the thing that's interesting here is that this is a public place. These these fax machines were sitting on a counter between a public place. They'd walk in without any credentials off the street, um, and uh, these people that are in this office space. I mean, these I call these the ballot boxes, and they were unprotected in that way. Also, is there any notion, if you look at this, of where they're going to put these these uh, these faxes after they're done? So we have to get process and we have to have oversight. Um, here, um, we have a very different situation. So I talked about people not getting to their polling place. These people have nothing to do with the vote. These people are looking at uh, the registration of all of the voters and figuring out which precinct they vote in. This is a very strange space. This, this space is a um, a warehouse with 50 polling places in it because after after Katrina they didn't have all the normal places to go to to vote so they put them all in one building so figuring out where to go so you could vote without making 50,000 people that were going to try to vote in that in that in that warehouse uh, clump up and become a big mess that couldn't get through was of course a challenge and because of these people these eight people sitting here Everyone was getting to their polling place so so well that you see no one waiting in a queue here. Very impressive. Another example of process mistakes is how many people should be in a polling in a in a polling booth. Well, here we have three in this polling booth. Um, there shouldn't be that, right? Um, the the idea of somebody uh, helping you vote is is actually uh, pretty much illegal. Um, but people um, say, oh, my mother needs my help. And I've literally watched um, when uh, in Chicago, I was in a situation where I was listening to somebody, you know, in her 50s, taking her mother who's in her 80s into a polling booth. And I remember the, the, the mother saying, well, I want to vote this way. And the daughter says, no, we discussed this. We're voting this way. Well, <laughs> you know, this is this mother should be able to vote how she wants. That's that's the whole point of a of a, of a polling booth. That's the point of a private ballot. And and this. This went this interchange went back and forth two or three times. 
No one, you know, I mean, this is not how you should vote. By the way, these lights, these lights were not in the polling place when I came in. They, somebody went off to uh, Best Better Bath and Beyond or something and bought those uh, after the polling place opened because it was too dark to vote in this place. We have to, uh, you know, we have to practice uh, and and be ready to run our election processes um, if for, for them to succeed. Um, here is a terrible uh, story. Um, <clears throat> there, I, I really believe uh, in single agent independence, okay? So the problem is this is a single agent and we are depending on her reading the beginning of day count on this voting machine and putting it in to this thing, not making any errors. By the way, it is now about, you know, 657 and and the, the voting opens at 700. So she is under the gun to get all of these uh, voting machines running. And what I say is there's no such thing as one person uh, running a voting machine. You have to have a person and somebody supervising them. Otherwise, you don't know that she made that mistake. I told you earlier in this conversation, even transferring a word from one page to another by one of the top cognitive scientists in the world, they made a mistake, one in 27. Is she gonna get the numbers right for the beginning of the day count on these ballots? I'm sorry, uh, these, these these machines, it's, 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 it's scary to me. So, um, that, that, that's my single agent independence. There's other problems in this voting uh, area that we could talk about that happened that day. Um, uh, that particular voting area, uh, voting place, they plugged um, all of the voting machines into one fuse that also ran a microwave oven and they blew the fuse before the day started. And uh, I might have a picture of that, but anyway, what it meant is these were all running on batteries and they all ran out of batteries. And, and so this, this became a big problem. So you have to get your processes together. You have to have your backup plans together. And, and literally, uh, you know, I asked them, could you please unplug the microwave oven after they fixed it? And uh, they, they said, no, <laughs> I mean, it's not my job. I don't run the polling place, but they were in danger. We have to, we have to have better processes. And uh, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Um, here's another big problem that happened um, in in uh, Boston, um, is it legal or okay to have a policeman in a polling place? Most of the country, no. In Boston, yes. The problem with this particular policeman is that he has relieved one of the poll workers from their job. In fact, two. So when you go into a polling place, you sign in, and then when you after you've deposited your ballot, you sign out. The reason you sign out after you've deposited your ballot is to make it so that you do not take your ballot outside of the polling place and give it to uh, give it to somebody that will fill it out and, and have somebody go in and use it. That's called chain voting. When, when the, 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 the bosses in Chicago would have people, they'd give a person a dollar to go in uh, with a filled out ballot and then bring out a clean ballot. So this guy, unfortunately, has both the uh, registration uh, book for, for intake and outtake in front of him. He's filling them out both at the same time so that he isn't getting that 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 check that you need when you leave the ballot, the, the polling place uh, that you actually um, uh, deposit your ballot. Um, and also um, the people that are voting um, might be intimidated by a policeman with with a walkie talkie and a, and a gun um, taking their registration, which they, he's not supposed to do. In fact, the person that went off to the bathroom that he relieved was a little bit intimidated to take back their job. And that's why he's sitting there doing it. Um, so, um, yeah, you shouldn't have people that are untrained doing anything in voting. Um, so, these people are, are a bunch of poll workers um, trying to decide how to, um, how to set up uh, this, 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 um, this voting machine. Uh, there's a lot of good in, the, in in that. They're all learning from each other. That's fine. What's bad is when one of those people was the person who uh, was at the end of the day, the voting day, uh, took the voting module and put it in her pocket for safekeeping. So <laughs> no one person should be able to take uh, 
a piece of uh, material that represents all of the votes and put it in anybody's pocket. It has to be out in the open. It has to be, it is, it is the poll, it is the, it is, it is the ballot box. And it has to be that other people saw her do that. So that, that uh, just seemed very suspect to me when she did that. I don't think it was a problem. I don't think she was doing anything. Uh, she, you know, she was just being expedient, but that's because she doesn't have uh, rituals that she has worked out that, that require two people or more to, to supervise. This is, a, I'm a broken record on the, some of these topics, I'm sorry, but I, I just find that, that showing some of these pictures sometimes <clears throat> helps people visualize that the, that the, the messiness of, of administering um, uh, polling places. Here, uh, somebody uh, is sorting out all of the ballots that were on the floor um, from this from this poll this this voting machine um, to put into these envelopes uh, to take and and send in. And what is um, a little frustrating in this case with the same uh, this this is this guy has um, had the problem that when people put in ballots that have been folded. They take up a lot of space in this polling in this ballot box. So every now and then he grabs a big pile of these out of the ballot, the ballot box during the day and puts them over here on the shelf. The shelf then becomes an unsecured ballot box. Very, very, very upsetting to me. Furthermore, um, at one point, uh, some people takes the, take, took these. This is uh, in um, Wellesley, Massachusetts, um, into the back room. One person took a bunch of these ballots into the back room to organize them. Okay, she had a sharpie on the back of her, of her, of her, you know, over over her, you know, that she had with her, right, in uh, over her ear. Um, was she gonna play with the sharpie with these ballots? I hope not. But nobody should go alone with a bunch of ballots on the day of election, or ever. Filled out ballots are very sacred, right? Um, here is. Um, <clears throat> 10,000 ballots that have been rejected in New Orleans. And here are the 11 reasons that they've been rejected. Okay. So um, it's signature, uh, signature missing, signature not recognizable, things like that mostly. But it's kind of upsetting to think that this whole box of, of ballots are not going to get, uh, are not going to get collected. Now, we saw these people I talked about with, with their, um, with their uh, problem with uh, that woman um, checking their ballots. It turns out this is the same polling place. It has another problem. This problem is that <clears throat> the person gave them the ballot, gave them what's called a um, provisional ballot. So the way that the machine that she was using, the way that the setup that gave the ballot to the voters was set up, she gave them a ballot uh, um, starting card that was set up for if they were um, voting, even though no one could find the registration. That means that they can't vote on any of the local elections. All of these people that are standing around are angry and frustrated because they weren't able to vote on local elections. And they weren't because they, um, she, she set up their ballots incorrectly. Now that they've, she set up their ballots, nobody really knew the very fundamental point that you can always spoil your ballot and get a new one. But they, they're, they're, they're waiting for someone to resolve the problem. The person that caused the problem actually thought that the problem was caused by the electrical outage that I was talking about, which wasn't true at all. And so these people that you're looking at will never get to vote on that in their, on their local elections. That, that, that was, a, um, here is uh, the, the servers in Reno, Nevada, for the election. Uh, notice these doors are open. That's that's the public. That's outdoors. You know, that you, you could walk into the front door of this of this uh, governmental building uh, to look at this flag or something. Uh, there, there you should never have uh, open open access to to any place that has uh, also should you have a shredder? <laughs> anyway, um, so here I kind of like a couple of things that are going on. What I like about this is that all of these ballot modules have a place. And at the end of the day, every single one of these ballot modules is in a slot. And we see that they are all being accounted for. And that, uh, in the, now in a polling, in a, in, a, 
you know, uh, election um, counting room. Um, we have, um, you know, uh, this person taking one of those ballot modules. This person is watching this person who's going to take that ballot module and look at it. This person's watching these people doing it. This was a high class operation. Uh, this is, by the way, I was telling you there, there was these poll, these people from Baton Rouge that came down to help the uh, New Orleans election. That's one of these people. So these are these people that they were making sure the election was running correctly there. Um, <clears throat> then we have the first time that the paper ballot, a paper, um, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, um, a, 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 a paper verification tape was used um, in Reno. And I went up to watch how that worked out. Um, the thing that's scary here is that when it jammed, this woman by herself, didn't quite know what to do. So she gets out her manual and reads about it. Here's her, here's her printer, which is basically a ballot box. And then she gets out some scissors and cuts out part of the, the ballot that, that, it, that, it, that it jammed. And I don't know, is she gonna put that in an envelope? Is she gonna tape it to the inside of that, of that, uh, that ballot box? Is she going to send it to the election officials? We don't know. In fact, in uh, a study of uh, paper paper trails um, uh, in Ohio, we found that five to fifteen percent of of these uh, this kind of uh, printer would misprint and there'd be some problem. So this is um, a dangerous business, but I certainly think the security issue there is is the thing that I most <laughs> most most frightened of. Um, I designed and built uh, approach that. Here's a picture from um, Scientific American of a person voting when they can hear. So instead of having a paper trail that you look at, um, I had a system where um, it would speak it. And what I liked about my system was that it was a cassette tape recorder that had voice activation. So when you voted for Schwarzenegger instead of Smith, it sounds very different in your ear than Smith. So you can hear the difference. And what we found in a study was with the paper trails uh, of 100 ballots that had two errors per ballot, um, <clears throat> um, less than 14% of people even noticed. That is, we even saw in the video that they looked confused when they saw the, the ballot. Zero, zero of them reported that there was a problem when they had this fraudulent printout on the paper trail that the computer had printed separately, differently from how they'd selected. With the audio, 80, uh, over 85% of the people recognized that there was an error and, and, um, and, and something under 20, by the way, percent um, reported it. So they still weren't reporting it, um, which is unfortunate, but at least they were recognizing it and and in some cases trying to fix it, uh, which is better. So um, the good thing about the audio verification idea is that there's no computer involved, um, that the person uh, hears what the, per what the computer has produced, uh, that it's a separate record like the paper trail is. Um, and and there, are, um, uh, there have been controversy about, about uh, different kinds of verification. The, uh, one company, Heart InterCivic, actually made Paper, uh, these these uh, um, these tape recorder approaches. Um, I, I don't. Yeah, I, I really don't even remember. Uh, it's been a while. What the why the um, some of the pundits were were not so um, so happy with it. So here is the that study I talked about um, with um, uh, uh, the VPAT is the 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 blue. That's the that's the verified paper trail. Um, and, um, you know, there were some mistakes in the record. Okay, that's the question. And um, uh, the, the VVAT people, they, they, they heard it. The, the um, VPAT people did not. Um, and so, um, anyway, that's, that's my, my little experiment. I also spent some time trying to understand ballot design because uh, when we look at that, uh, some of those first and many uh, ballot design problems, um, they, they cause a lot of mischief. For example, in 2006 in Sarasota, um, there was a situation 
where the most important race on the ballot probably was replacing um, the 13th uh, Congressional District um, 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 Congressperson who was Catherine Harris. She's actually had done a bad job. She was the person that actually stopped the recount in, in Florida. So she was very famous uh, and they were gonna replace her with, you know, she, she was uh, with a new, you know, there, there was an election of the two people, of the people that could, could replace her. And every, and 11% of people didn't vote for that. That was the second race on the ballot. Why did 11% of people not vote? So there was a court case and people said, it's gotta be fraud. Well, I ran experiments and found out um, by running these, by the way, it took me five tries to find this problem, that the problem was that there was a long list of people to vote for for the top of the ballot, that was the senator or something, and the congressional person was the second race. It was on the next page. It was at the top of the page, and right below it was the word um, state. So it was all of the non uh, congressional things, all of the non-federal things were right below it. So that big, that big banner kept people from looking above that line at those two people that were running, that were that were competing for that that race. And um, when I ran my experiment, 16% of people didn't notice it. And I could talk more about this in detail, but the point is that ballot design matters. Uh, and and you can you you know you can design a ballot, and people have designed ballots. Uh, to 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 push people one way or another. For example, in many jurisdictions, um, the law provides for the incumbent to be the top person on the race. So, in this design, we have you can see that person's voting for president. You can see that there's nobody voted for senator. You can see that you have made a selection for one of the presidential candidates. So. All of those things visual, visually, um, um, you know, in your face uh, will make, make people make one third less mistakes. That was an experiment we ran showing that with this uh, literally, um, well, it's even worse than that because what we found was that people that have um, reading disabilities, and that's actually 14% or more of people have dyslexia. And those people will make like without without having treatment and and therapy, they will go through ballot making um, making um, three times as many errors as other people. And this this actually this what we call low error voting interface uh, eliminated that. So um, we ran um, uh, these studies. We had various versions of uh, of 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 it. If you look at this older version, you'll see, you can see right off the bat that these green things have all been voted for. Nobody has voted for this race or that race or that race or that race. So we aren't in danger of leaving the ballot booth without knowing that we have or haven't voted for some of the races, which is what happened in, in, my, in my 13th congressional district that I was talking about a few minutes ago. <clears throat> um, so, um, I'm talking about, uh, oh, we've, we've talked about, um, I'm not gonna talk about uh, uh, audio ballots, but we've, 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 we've worked on uh, reducing the um, problems with audio ballots. Audio ballots um, are, are important for people that are blind. Um, and what um, a study that I did, a piece of work I did, we found a way uh, that it takes people several minutes to fill out an absentee ballot, uh, to fill out a write-in for a, in an abs in a, in a blind interface uh, of, of, of that people have been using. And we designed one where people could uh, fill it out much, much, much faster. So um, when things are too laborious, people don't do them. And we literally were having no people not being able to succeed at using the write-in. So the technology we give people that we say is going to solve their problems, we have to test it and make sure it works. Um, so we have to have, uh, every step requires mutual supervision. If I haven't that beat the head of, of that, your head over it. Here is my friend that was giving everybody, this is, uh, this is the provisional ballot choice that she was punching into her little system. 
this is the number that she was supposed to give for Democrats or uh, nonpartisan or Republican. And the reason this is taped down below on that one, this is another place. This is actually not where this woman was making a mistake. She had this one taped there and she's filling, she's, she's punching in these numbers and she's using the thing that's closest to her to decide what, what to punch in to make these voting cards for people. Uh, big mistake, right? And that's why this place, they, out of frustration, they took that provisional ballot uh, um, instruction and put it below. And what I find surprising always is how um, ballot places, people often are making their instructions for themselves on paper. They're doing it with, with you know, Sharpies. Um, they are, uh, um, yeah, it, it, is, it is ad hoc. Okay, uh, paper must be held carefully. Um, I've talked about the errors. Um, I'm gonna move on. And I've, I've gone through many of these things already. Uh, I wanna say that um, in my tenure at Voting Technology Project, we worked, yes, we worked on a whole lot of different technologies trying to evaluate a lot of the problems of where these votes are lost in registration, in, in uh, uh, polling place operations, in ballot design, um, and, and, and of course, uh, with, with, with uh, a concern to the future where security problems could cause uh, big problems. Just to give you an example of, um, I'm gonna go to the other deck. And I, I, I hope that these are these stories make some sense to you guys. Uh, hang on, I've got to find my other deck. Uh, trust in us. Okay. Um, <clears throat> um, so I, I like another story I like to talk about uh, relative to security is um, that <clears throat> there's somebody that by themselves had access to the, uh, the um, voting numbers in Volusia County, Florida. And some of you have heard me talk about this before in 2000. And on the night of election where Gore was going to lose by hook or by crook, I guess, um, 16,022 Democratic votes disappeared about 11 o'clock from the, from the number that was being given to the, the networks, to CNN, ABC, and Fox. Fox immediately reported that as the new number of votes, and CNN called up and said, why are there fewer votes than there were the last time you sent it to us? Um, in checking it, it seemed as though somebody had altered the database, um, and they'd done it, they'd, they'd, they'd removed them at, you know, at the back end database. Uh, what did they do? They recalibrated, they, re they used the, the, um, the ballots, uh, the ballot modules to rebuild the uh, database, and uh, nobody's ever talked about who it was that removed those 16,022 votes, but they were restored within 40 minutes. So um, the, there's a lot of interesting things in that story to me. One is that um, we have, I have lots of, we have lots of evidence of people um, tampering with um, vote counts um, as they used to phone them in they, and they used to write them down in lots of different ways. But now we have a situation where when we were continuously uh, 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 reporting them and we had the supervision of the networks, they could um, see that. Is somebody trying to ask me a question? I'm sorry. No? Okay. So, um, more recently um, in the uh, research for accessible voting, uh, the Election Assistance Commission had me um, run a lot of studies at Berkeley and at, and at Carnegie Mellon to um, improve um, uh, vote, voting for people with disabilities in various ways. One of the things I made, you can go to uh, the website, um, um, uh, the RAV uh, website, which should be here, but isn't, um, and you can play with designing and running a polling place. One of my favorite things that I built was this thing where you can set up a polling place so you can, ahead of time, simulate where are the power cords? Where are the, where's the check-in counter? Where's the checkout counter? Where, are, where you know, um, because it turns out all of those things matter gigantically. And 
uh, I actually made the system so that if you had a problem somewhere uh, in the in the on the day of election, you would click on the thing on that simulator. Um, uh, you'd click on that, and it would come up at the election office downtown that there was a problem at this, at, you know, in this at this voting station in this location. And why is that interesting? Well, a lot of reasons. First of all, it documents it. I watched in LA County as they had a whiteboard where all the problems were coming up on this whiteboard were being written down on this whiteboard. And as they were solved, they would wipe the whiteboard. You don't wanna wipe out a problem. You want to record it and understand it and learn from it in the future, right? Second thing is that, that, that on the day of election in 2000, um, sorry, it's such an old story, but it's just an interesting time. Um, um, LA County, actually in 2002, they had this problem. Um, 40 minutes for an election official to get through to the central headquarters uh, in LA to ask a question about a voting problem. This is terrible, right? You cannot have the election officials out in the uh, out in the all the jurisdictions without the support that they need to get through their election. So that's why I was really excited about about this device. Um, this is this is this represents that audio thing I was talking about, uh, improving people's ability to. Um, uh, to to uh, put in uh, to to vote with blind. This represents um, a magnifying glass. So the idea uh, I probably have one here. It doesn't matter. Um, of having an illuminated magnifying glass for people with uh, sight problems is really interesting. And the reason I actually designed and had injection molded at, uh, a a magnifying glass that was sold for many years from Inclusion Solution. The reason I, I wanted a magnifying glass is that if you have tremor, a magnifying glass isn't so easy. Mine stand on the ballot. If you um, have short-term memory loss, it's standing on the ballot shows you where you're working on the ballot. If you have um, sight loss, mine had a, a illuminator, a little um, LED light that illuminates it and magnifies it. So you see the ballot the, that you're filling out. So on paper ballots, the exciting thing is this prosthetic that would slide down the ballot, the paper page one at a time helps people with dyslexics, dyslexics also. When you take a ruler and move it down a piece of paper and you have dyslexia, it keeps you organized and you make uh, almost no mistakes. If you try to read things that are all in order, you can get very confused, make you know three times as many errors. So that's, that's what this magnifying glass, it's a very simple physical thing a lot of my friends in uh, my, uh, in voting always wondered why I put all that energy into that. We also made a um, uh, oh my god I'm going through our time. All right, we made a we made a um, uh, a website analyzer that would um, demonstrate um, uh, to okay uh, demonstrate to a person the problems uh, of the website. How what these are all the text colors used in this website. Here there's um. Uh, it, it would make a list of how many um, how many fonts were used in this in this um, in this uh, website. How many uh, fonts were smaller than 16 point? They wouldn't be easy, easy to read for a person with sight problems. This was something we made where it let you put an overlay that that taught you uh, that showed you where to go through as you're doing registration and and took you hand over hand through a website helping you go through the process of registering. Anyway, we made all of these things, um, and I'm not gonna talk uh, much more about that. We're running very low on time, but I wanna just say that, you know, here's a person using uh, a magnifier, and they're looking and they can see Catherine Harris um, uh, and Bill Nelson, uh, they're trying to vote for. And <clears throat> this is another uh, idea, um, Enka uh, Blanchard and I worked on um, thinking about how to make more new prosthetics for for um, paper ballots. Um, this one, you slide this red thing down the page. Remember, we were talking about that if you slide something down the page, it keeps you organized. This one um, is just uh, an extra piece of paper around your ballot where you are given these stars for each of the ballots, uh, ballot, uh, what do you call it, um, races, and you can you can go over and put that one on Marine McIntyre, and you can see there's no more stars to put on uh, this this race, this 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 poll, this um, ballot after you've taken these 
uh, four um, stars and put them on the ballot. And in that way, we are helping a person see that they have completed their task. We're giving them uh, evidence that these are the different races, because remember I told you that in Sarasota they missed those races. We are giving them another, the, another idea we had was having a funny, a funny uh, envelope where you pull the ballot out of the envelope. So that as you pull it piece by piece, it makes one race uh, noticeable at a time. Thinking about all sorts of ways of orienting uh, people so that they don't make uh, mistakes. I talked about um, uh, having a, uh, a way of dragging people through um, a, a uh, website, uh, showing them um, the steps they have to take um, to get through the registration. That, that was a, an idea we tried. And, and really um, been enjoying uh, gigantically working with um, Alan Sherman and Enka Blanchard on a lot of new weird ideas about voting. And one of the fun things about, um, about working on um, uh, different places where people vote uh, is that there are different problems. So for example, when, when, you, make, <clears throat> when you make a uh, an election um, of, uh, that's going to depend, they're gonna give people tenure or not. It used to be people would just say, you know, I'm in favor of giving this person tenure. And then I've been in rooms where, where uh, people actually looked askance at the person that had said that. Um, or um, they actually got, yeah, even, even in more than askance, they got, you know, they got called out for doing that. And so you want to have even, you know, <laughs> accurate and private ballots for things like that too. And Alan uh, really spear pointed an effort last year for us during COVID to figure out how to run those kind of tenure case elections um, using new new approaches for for um, for running them, and we did two two different things. We made um, a wild um, uh, what we called origami uh, ballots, which uh, Enka and I um, uh, worked on together um, a lot um, to design ballots where you could see that a person uh, had uh, had. Uh, Visit, put their ballot in, but you couldn't see how they voted. Um, and we also um, made a system where people online um, in these in these um, in these uh, um, um, in these boardroom uh, votes, like like choosing tenure, could could um, uh, vote, and we could verify that they had voted. Um, and that actually was tried and used in several elections at the University of Baltimore. Uh, University of Mat uh, Maryland, Baltimore. So um, uh, we're also working on a bunch of other um, things about improving uh, passwords and 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 short-term memories of biometrics. Uh, th these are a bunch of fun things that Enka and me and Alan are thinking about relative to uh, improving security and usability. And um, um, the, the the question, you know, uh, about how you guys might get interested in being involved with us. Uh, would be would be delightful in that right now we're running an experiment where we're hoping to make it so people can match very very complicated big big uh, big uh, passwords or or special numbers without ha uh, w even even if they um, um, are disabled. So um, um, anyway, I I'm just seeing that we um, uh, are running low on time. I'm sorry. Um, and the question of how to get rid of mistrust, opacity, and danger uh, um, is 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 through something I call considered computing. Um, and how do we make these uh, systems that that give us our concentration back, but also make us aware of what we're concentrating on is has been the has been the center of my research. But um, the real the real question here is how we uh, get to citizen trust. Um, and um, improve improve the way that societies make decisions and follow through with um, running their societies. We know that the way that you know just the solving just just the the voting process is only one small step, um, and that there's a lot of other things about making a government and a society that works well. That's true, but uh, working on voting has been interesting to me because it seemed like a very simple, small thing that would have a big impact. Um, and I think with that, I'm not going to go on and and um, um, 
uh, say more, I'm going to just uh, try to stop uh, sharing if I know how to do that. How do I stop sharing? Uh, stop sharing and go back to being part of this group for a minute because I know that we, uh, it's 1057 and I know that, uh, I don't know, probably you guys, uh, the bell will ring and you'll have to run down the hall to another class or something. Uh, so what, uh, are there some questions or thoughts that people wanna, wanna um, enter? Hello? Um, sorry, I'm, I don't have a question specifically right now, but it looks like there's a few questions in the, uh, in the chat. Okay. Let me see if I can, uh, I'm not up. used to that. I'll, I'll push this chat thing there. Wow. This is great. Okay. So it's best if somebody curates that for me. Um, I, I don't okay. see any questions in the chat. No, no, there's one, um, which is uh, from um, Cyrus, which was, uh, do you think it's possible that an audio verification could influence the way apathetic voters vote, especially when one name sounds more gentle in the nation? <laughs> oh, this is really a very common uh, tactic for people to, um, so there was, when, 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 um, when LA was, uh, when, when, when we were replacing um, the, 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 the election that got us Schwarzenegger as the governor of, of California, there were 139, uh, people that, that, that entered the race. Um, there were, there was one porn star, uh, there was, um, and, and Ed Kennedy, um, there was a Bob Dole, not the Bob Dole. These are, these are famous names. And, and, uh, what you found in that, in that, um, election also was that um, when people were were making a selection, it's a very interesting um, uh, 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 study that one of a, uh, um, a political science grad student did. They found that there were four top contenders for governor. Luckily, it was none of the ones that, 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 that were exactly the fake names like Bob Dole and Kennedy, although they got a few votes because people recognize them, but half a percent of people voted for the person next to one of the top contenders. So next to Bustamante, uh, Gray, um, what's his name, um, uh, Jerry Brown and um, Schwarzenegger, the people right next to them on the ballot got more votes and the ones next to them got a little more, more votes too. So there's a little bell curve around each of the, the highly touted um, people that were running for, for governor. So I answered two questions there. One is, yes, uh, people do try to scam, does, uh, getting, getting specific people to run for office whose name might sound like um, the person that's running for office or even have the same name um, so that it becomes very difficult for people to distinguish the, who they're trying to vote for. or and then also there's the mechanical issue. Us as technologists, we look at the mechanical and 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 cyber, you know, and, and cybersecurity issues of the difficulty of actually making a selection that you meant to um, seems to be beyond people. Uh, Ted, if I may, please. If I recall correctly, the paper is actually 0.4 percent and not 0.5 because. I'm I'm nasty with that, but it's mostly it's open four percent of the people who want to vote for Schwarzenegger. It's not open four percent of the total. That well, it's point point four percent of the ones that yeah. So you look at it's a bell curve around Schwarzenegger, not of all voters, but of the ones that were voting in that area. A uh, bunch of them vote for him, and point four percent next to him, and then the a little bit yeah. maybe for the one next to that. Yes. Yeah, a bit, a bit less, and and there's but also the a point four point five. And it's it so good that you, it's, I mean, it's of the people who vote for one. Yeah, and and can I lean on you all the time for your mathematical and statistical abilities. I, I had I had to bother you a little bit. Come on, uh, <laughs> but but yeah, uh, no. The, the other thing that matters is is of course uh, the position that that I did manage to check. Yeah, yeah. But, it, um, but, but I mean, I, so the reason I this talk, as you guys can see, uh, I did not touch on the standard cryptographic issues. 
uh, so much because I really, one of the things I've just decided and learned is that getting um, people that are thinking about those issues to, to recognize the environment that it all exists in and what all of the dangers are is the only way that we're going to be able to triage and decide where are the important problems that need to be dealt with next and where are the problems that are that will come up later that aren't important right now and so that's 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 been the the, the concern for me is that there's been lots of problems that have come up and haven't been dealt with um, as well as they could and some of them are very easy to deal with I would I, I wanted uh, somebody I would love it if um, Oh, good. Okay, here's for something from Colin. Uh, yeah, um, thank you for that, Colin. Um, I guess I want to know if, yeah, reminds me of fake news story of 2016, uh, voting for Haramble. <laughs> yeah. Um, so um, maybe, maybe you know, any of the students, would you guys tell me what the most surprising or interesting thing that you heard today is, or if it's all stuff you already knew. Uh, I, I just like somebody to, yeah, I, I like feedback. Michael is asking um, what's known about how colors influence voters. Oh my gosh. Colors are a very interesting topic. First of all, 15% of men uh, are blue green colorblind. That's one problem. Another is that red, we only have um, six bits of resolution for red, and we have eight bits of resolution for green. So um, the the contrast um, is really important. And you remember that 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 terrible picture I took of these people huddled around in a dark room trying to vote. Uh, you want high contrast um, uh, in in a ballot, and you want to be able to distinguish that you made the selection. That's kind of why I was excited about those gold stars, right? In that in that paper ballot that that. Um, it's, it's that that approach that that I made that that uh, for paper ballot, um, you know, improving paper ballot or, uh, ability to verify that you voted in on a, up for race. So color, yes. Um, the thing about color is people don't remember color very well, um, and um, really, I think what's best about color is distinctions. Now, on the other hand, if you see a color red, um, I'll just give you a funny story about red. Okay. And then, then we will move off that topic. So I, w I designed the ThinkPad. And the most important thing that people know about me is that red dot in the middle of the keyboard. Well, the reason that's red is a man named Richard Sapper, a famous designer, wanted to make it red. Well, in Germany, it's illegal to make anything that isn't about, um, isn't, here's, here's, here's one. Okay, that's the, that's the nubbin that's in the, in the keyboard of a, of a ThinkPad. Um, uh, it is illegal to make anything that isn't about danger and emergency red. And so they said, you cannot make that red. And so we changed the dyes a little bit and made it a little pinky orangey. And then, you know, they accepted it. I don't know why he, I think he beat him over the head. But the point is that that people do have some emotional attachment to colors. And um, so colors, color or texture, uh, are, are ways of distinguishing things. Um, you know, color, you know, is hue. Um, and then intensity, right, brightness. And so those are our, those are our three, three levers for, um, for distinguishing uh, 2D things on, on paper or, or on a screen. Um, if you could uh, change some th things about how we vote, what would be your one or two highest priority recommendations? Well, I would like to make it really, here's a very bad story, okay? So, League of Women Voters makes people aware of both sides of issues, right? And the goal is to make people make more even-handed decisions. So, a study was done by the League of Women Voters do people vote more, do they make decisions better and have more nuance in them when they see both sides of the issue on the League of Women Voters um, <clears throat> handbook? And the answer was the opposite. It drives people more in, in the direction that they already believed. So this is terrifying to me. 
So um, the whole idea, just a moment, Andrea, the whole idea of deliberative democracy is this idea that people should be encouraged or required to go through the entire thought process of both sides of an issue before coming to their own conclusion. Is that something that we know how to do for people? Ay, 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 ay. But the guy that actually ran that, that ran the, the publication of Legal Living and Voters, who had been doing it for 25 years, he quit over that study I just told you. So my, my dream, one, one thing that's really missing is that there are ways that people assure themselves they've learned at least what they want to know about the races they're going to vote for before they go into the polling place. And better than that would be for them to actually walk in the shoes of both sides before they make a decision. That's a, that's a, maybe I, I, I you, we can ask that question again. That's a deflection, of course. Yes, Enkin, what were you going to say? Uh, I, 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 if I recall correctly, uh, I, I may be wrong, but it might be called the backlash effect, the thing you thought. And I've got actually good news for you, which, because I thought this, when I saw it, uh, it's, it's despairing, right? You say, hey, maybe if I tell, if I, if we try to talk to people, they, they might get a more nuanced position and the answer is no. Uh, thank goodness there have been replication studies on that effect, which have failed. So it's actually being questioned right now. There's actually evidence that it, it might either be so low as to be negligible or not exist at all. But I mean, it deserves more research, I believe. Fantastic. That's, that's the best news I've heard all day. And yeah. I bet you, just as deliberative democracy has made a process for helping people think about and, and consider and, and accept alternatives, so things can be discussed can be uh, can be presented to you to make you like them less or more uh, and and push you more into your you know your comfort zone or farther away from it and uh, the question of how to how to help people become informed uh, is a very uh, very difficult process um, and it goes all the way to in Greece where people literally candidates will pay people sometimes to fly to the place where they're supposed to vote uh, and funny about that, but people tend to vote for the person that flew them there. Uh, so uh, p paying for votes is not uh, not a good thing, uh, and we want to uh, eliminate that as well. Um, so uh, the the real question that one would probably want to ask, if uh, Alan would want me to answer anyway, about what can be improved in voting, um, would be about technology, right? And I have focused a lot of my efforts over the last two decades on disability voting because there's so much uh, improvements that can be done there that would help everyone, okay? And the problem for improving technology for voting um, has been um, that people, um, um, there's a lot of people making a living out of pointing out the flaws in, 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 in various things, security, uh, across lots of things, but voting in specific uh, people. Some people have had a good time doing that. The question is, is there any perfect system? And will we ever have that perfect system? And the real difficulty, what I think can be improved is us to figure out what are the metrics by which we understand um, the dangers and quantify them um, and compare them, uh, not in an emotional way, but in, but, but in an algorithmic way. So that we really are using voting machines, not because of political reasons, but because of technical reasons. I, I want to bother you a last time with a question. I won't actually bother you. Uh, so I'm 100 happy, happy. NK, you can bother me. You can bother <laughs> me many times a month. This is a man. A hundred and fifty years ago, <laughs> uh, some Americans proposed using the Australian ballot, now known as secret ballot in the US and it took about 40 years for it to be actually used uh, in the yes. US. Yes. Uh, now the thing is that Australia did two things at that point. They A, introduced a secret ballot, B, introduced mandatory voting, uh, which is, that which makes later. The, that came later, uh, right? Actual voting rate uh, near, always above 95%. Yeah. Now, what do you think of that for a country like the US? 
Um, I think that mandatory voting is a very exciting idea because um, what's what's exciting, by the way, the, the, these two things in Australia, Australia somehow has done a great job of improving their voting more than almost anybody and they do it quietly and, and beautifully. Uh, this this um, introducing this uh, basically something like a parking ticket if you don't vote. Um, so it's not a terrible, you know, you don't go to jail, but you definitely are in trouble. You have to pay some money. Um, it, changing it from having a turnout of 40% is my memory. And then can might get me, maybe it's 43% if he would tell me, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, more um, to, to 95%. Um, was a huge change, and I'm trying to remember when it was done. I think it was done only in the last 20 years or something, but it was a very exciting improvement. Um, and and that that um, there there are various things where people have seen huge jumps. For example, in England, there was an experiment in the early 2000s where they took people and they let them vote. Um, they tried letting people vote on television, on cell phone, on on internet, on paper, uh, by, by, by mail-in ballot, blah, blah, blah. And, and what they found was while it did not change the turnout in the next election, in the one after that, letting people have more flexibility about how they voted increased their ability to vote by 30 to 50% more turnout, okay? So sometimes getting used to a new system, you don't see it's valuable impact immediately. By the way, the giving people tickets and charging them for them in Australia, immediate success. Okay, so that's that's a that's a that's a low hanging fruit. Yes, we should do it in America. I think you should do it in France as well. <laughs> yes. Uh, Enka is sitting in the middle of Paris as he speaks with us. I am in Paris. Uh, and I don't think that Alan Sherman is on that mountain that he has behind him. He's just. He's like he, he, he's a fraud. Well, he likes to do fraudulent things. Alan, you're good at climate, but that that sounds a bit perilous to hold the talk that high. Yeah. <laughs> it's the Santis in St. Gallen, Switzerland. Uh, I took the photo from a hike. Um, well, thank you very much, Ted. It was a very interesting talk. And uh, anybody who's interested in joining the various research projects and voting going on at UMBC is welcome to do so should just talk to me. Okay. Um, I guess I want to speak to Michael Dickinson's thing. One last thing I want to say sure. is that before one of the things that we saw in many places before the databases had the ballots in them was people actually miss purposefully missing characters. I mean, numbers and mistranscribing on telephones. People have witnessed other people writing down the wrong numbers, writing down any number they want. So Chicago was especially well known for this. This was a problem in Brazil. Um, so when we don't have good things like, like a database where we keep the thing in it, uh, we, don't, we, do, we don't have any way of knowing. Uh, and then when we have database and maybe somebody can change it, it'd be very good if it had a good, a good audit trail. What everything that was put into that database should be being stored, Somewhere else too, by the way, and that person that's in charge of changing that database, any 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 administrator has to be supervised. These things, I have literally watched. Um, okay, Microvote. I'm going to give you one last example. Microvote's a little company in the Midwest, and when I went and watched them administering an election, they had one of their employees, not somebody from the jurisdiction that they're voting in, um, at a keyboard with a spreadsheet. Okay, a spreadsheet is probably the least secure way of holding data I can imagine. Not, not because somebody can break into it, but because it's like error, there are errors in every spreadsheet. They, they, people just make problems entering data and keeping track of the spreadsheet. There's, there's, there's lots of studies on this. So um, yes, how we keep our data is critical. Okay, I'm sorry, I, I just didn't wanna, um, didn't wanna let that go by. Uh, okay, so Alan, you were in the middle of of, of, of dismissing us. I'm sorry. You have, it's probably the, you get the last word, obviously. Well, um, thank you again. Um, we meet here every two weeks. All the talks are open to the public, and in two weeks, UMBC's Dr. Banerjee is going to give a status report on his DoD project to try to train um, 
the manufacturing sector about cybersecurity. So see everybody in two weeks. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to any follow-up. <laughs>